Welcome to the Fallout VR Essentials tutorial. This will mostly fix the dumpster fire of a game that Bethesda tried to sell to you as a full product. I made a tutorial video on this many years ago when I was inexperienced at content creation. This will be much easier to follow along with and have better editing. Okay, let's get into it. Step one, subscribe. I mean, you don't have to, but it does help and I spent an ungodly amount of time working on this mod list, so I do appreciate it. And while you're down there, if you wanna turn that little thumb blue, feel free to do that as well. Step two, let's go over what you need to get this mod list working. One, you need a working PC. You don't need a NASA computer since this mod list does in fact optimize the game and it will run better than it does on vanilla. If you have a gaming PC from the last few years or so, you should be golden. Two, you're gonna need a VR headset to play Fallout in VR. Now, if you are in a Quest 2, which I assume a lot of you are, I do always recommend plugging that bad boy into your PC with a USB-C cable to play Fallout or Skyrim, because if you play over Wi-Fi, you might run into some performance problems. It tends to happen more with Bethesda VR games. Couldn't tell you why. Just blame that on Todd Howard. Three, you will need to own official Steam versions of Fallout VR, and this is important, the flat desktop version of Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition. This is so you can get the DLCs into VR, which is needed for this mod list to work. Now, if you don't already own Fallout Game of the Year and don't want to spend the outrageous price of 40 bucks on a nearly 10 year old game, there are websites out there, which shall not be named, where you can get around this little problem. I'm gonna leave that to you and your wonderful Google search skills. The website does start with a G. Four, you will need to have a separate hard drive where you can install Steam games, preferably an SSD or NVMe. Or you will need to set up another folder on your hard drive that isn't in program files where you can install the game. If you have another hard drive, you can just go to Steam and click add Steam folder and it'll do it automatically. If you do not have a separate hard drive, there is a more complicated setup. There is a tool you can use that is linked in the description. The reason for this is Mod Organizer cannot access files located in the Program Files or Program Files 86 folder, which is where Steam is usually located by default and where it installs games. Fallout VR needs to be installed outside of Program Files. Step 3. Take a glance at the README doc which I have linked in the description. You can have that doc open and follow along with this video, but that doc has much more detail than I can do in video form. Step 4. Set up a Nexus Mods account if you don't already have one. That will also be linked in the description as well. And, this is important, get premium. This is needed for some of the mods to download properly. A month of premium is $5 or less. You can cancel after installing this. Step 5. Getting a clean version of Fallout VR If you have previously modded Fallout VR using Vortex or something, uninstall it and clear out the folder directory. You can do this by right-clicking Fallout VR on Steam, going to Properties, Local Files, then Browse Local Files and delete everything here after you've uninstalled. Now install Fallout VR into that separate folder that we talked about earlier. Go into that folder after it's installed, Find the Fallout VR EXE, right click it and select Properties, then Compatibility, and at the bottom, check on Disable Full Screen Optimizations and run this program as administrator. Next, go ahead and start up your headset and Steam VR. Then start Fallout VR. Start a new game here, click through the character creation, make one save, and exit. You will not actually be playing this game. This is just so some files are created and the mods don't mess up when installing. Step 7. Take off theater mode in Steam VR. This is helpful for every VR game, but very important for Bethesda VR games. Go into Steam properties and under the in-game section, uncheck use theater mode while Steam VR is active. Step 8. Moving DLC files into VR. First, make sure you have installed the regular Fallout 4 Desktop Game of the Year Edition. Start it up once. You do not need to make a save game for this. Now go into the data folder of Fallout 4. You can find this by right clicking on Steam under Fallout 4, going into Properties, Local Files, then Browse Local Files. Find the data folder here and right click and copy everything that says DLC. For example, you'll see a bunch of files that say DLC Robot, DLC Coast, DLC Workshop, etc. Do not copy the Creation Club content of Fallout 4. You only want to have the official DLC and DLC Workshop files. Now go into the data folder of Fallout VR. If you don't remember how to get there, go back to step 5 and click on Data. Paste all of those DLC files into here. Congratulations, you now have the DLCs in VR. You did the one thing that Bethesda was too lazy to do themselves. 
Step 9. Creating a folder for the mod list. You will need to create a folder for where you will install the mods to. This needs to be on the same hard drive that Fallout VR is installed on, but do not make a folder inside of Fallout VR. It should typically be on the root of the hard drive outside of any protected area of your PC, like program files. Call this whatever you want. To make it easy, we're going to call this Fallout VR Essentials. Step 10. Beginning the Wabajack installation. First, go to wabajack.org. It is linked in the description. Download the exe and place it in a folder somewhere on your desktop. Do not place it in program files or the Fallout VR folder. Now open it up on administrator mode. If you don't know how to do this, right click on the Wabajack exe and start as administrator. It might take a second while loading. On the top right of the Wabajack application, you'll see a wrench icon. Click on that and then to the left, you'll see Nexus mods with a login button. Click on that and it will ask you to log into Nexus if you haven't already. Now go to Browse Mod List and on the drop down select Fallout 4 VR and you should see the lovely mod list that I created for you. Press the play button and it will immediately open up the README. You can ignore that if you're watching this video. You will see two boxes, Mod List Installation Location and Resource Download Location. Click on the three dots to the right of Mod List Installation Location and find that folder that we created in Step 9 and click OK. If you wish, you can also put the resource download location to a separate area on your PC. For example, I have some SSD drives where I have the game and mods installed to, but I also have a large 2TB SATA drive for storage. I put the download location to the SATA drive to save on space. Step 11. Installing the mod list. Check on that little box at the bottom that says Overwrite and press play. You'll now start getting a slideshow of all the mods being installed on your system automatically. Now go away for a bit. This is going to take a while. Go get a coffee, maybe touch some grass, maybe not. I don't know your life. You will get a mod list installation complete message when it's done. Come back here when it's finished. Step 12. Copying over the game folder files. Once you get that mod list complete message, you can go into the lovely folder we made before called VR Essentials, find a folder in there called Game Folder Files. Now copy everything in there except for the folder labeled Load Order for your profile. Go back into the Fallout VR folder. Again, if you don't know how to get there, go back to step 5, paste everything in the Fallout VR folder, not the data folder, the root folder where the Fallout VR exe is located. Find an application called F4SEVR underscore loader, right click it and select properties, then compatibility, and check on run this program as administrator. Step 13. Starting up a game using the script extender. Inside the root Fallout VR folder, you should see an application called F4SEVR underscore loader if you copied over the game folder files in step 12. Start up your headset, open Steam VR. And then on your desktop, double click on that application and wait until Fallout VR starts up. Load into the game you made earlier, then quit the game. This is just so you won't have any issues using Mod Organizer. Step 14. Launching and configuring the mod list. Find that folder where the mod is installed called VR Essentials. Scroll down until you see an application called Mod Organizer 2. Right click it, select properties, compatibility, and check on disable full screen optimizations and run this program as administrator. Now right click it again and select create shortcut. Place this shortcut on your desktop for easy access later. Double click on Mod Organizer 2. You might get a message asking if you want to open as portable. Select yes and this will open up a fully configured set of mods for the game. Click on the wrench and screwdriver icon at the top and select Nexus, then connect to Nexus. When you get a pop-up asking if Mod Organizer 2 would like to access your account, click on Authorize. Step 15. A quick overview of Mod Organizer. If you've never used this software before, I'm going to go over a quick tutorial for you. To the right is the Plugins and Download tabs, and the left is the Installed Mods. Both the Installed Mods and the Plugins tab on the right should always be sorted by priority. Do not sort the mod list in any other way. This will cause problems and be a huge inconvenience for you. If you need to find a specific mod that you want to change settings with, there is a search bar at the bottom. You'll also see a drop down bar on the left next to profile. This will say FO4 VR Essentials. Now open that drop down menu and at the top, click on Manage. 
a pop-up menu will appear. Click on copy and name this whatever you want. I'm going to call it Genghis's Custom Game. Doing this gives you a clean version of the mod list that you can change and mess with to your will. I do not recommend messing with this mod list unless you know what you're doing, but in case you mess anything up, you have a completely clean version which will always be the FO4 VR Essentials profile, and you can go back and copy that again as needed. For now, just stick to your own custom profile. Step 16. Customizing Mods At the bottom, you will see a bunch of mods under red separators. Most of these can be customized or checked on at will. If you would like to change settings under the customizable section, for example, I do recommend doing this with the VR FPS stabilizer, highlight that mod, right click it and select reinstall mod. Now select the settings appropriate for your own headset and what you're using. For example, if you're on a quest and want reprojected frames to get a higher refresh rate, you can do that. I set everything to 90Hz because I'm on a Vive, but you may need to play around with this according to your own headset. You can also change settings for the HUD or the Create Your Own Difficulty mod. I would first play with my settings to see if you like it, but feel free to mess with any mods in this section. Also, if you're on a quest, Disable the mod that says Index UI Fix. You don't need that. You can also mute the player voice if you want. And at the bottom, you'll see a mod that says Safe Auto Saving. Step 17, setting up an automatic save system. This is a bit of a complex setup and it is optional, so skip this section if you want, but I would highly recommend doing this and it will be worth the effort in the end. I created a custom auto hotkey script that ties in with the save hotkey mod and it periodically makes full saves in your game that can't be corrupted every 3-5 to five minutes. So you won't need to worry about saving and you'll never lose progress if you crash. First, you should enable the mod that says safe auto saving in mod organizer. Now download and install auto hotkey to your PC. The link for that is in the description. You can now download the custom script I made, which basically just presses N on your keyboard periodically, place that somewhere on your desktop. When you want to start the script, make sure you set it to run as administrator before you start up the game. There is one more thing we'll have to do in the mod config menu in game, but whenever you want to start the auto saving, you just need to press F8 on your keyboard. Step 18. Starting up modded Fallout VR. To run the game, first start up your VR headset and Steam VR. Now in Mod Organizer 2, on the right side, you'll see a drop down menu. Make sure it's selected on Play Fallout Essentials and hit Run. Wait until you load into the main menu of Fallout VR. Step 19. Fixing Index Controllers. This is specifically for Valve Index Controllers, but if you're on Quest or something else, you can skip this. To get the correct bindings for index, go into SteamVR under settings, then controllers, then go to manage controller bindings and select custom. Make sure you're under Fallout VR, then scroll down until you see bindings called Fallout VR Essentials Bindings and select Activate. If for some reason you do not see an option called Fallout VR Essentials Bindings, which some people have reported, look for bindings called FRIK, then you're going to want to edit some things so the Pip Boy will work properly. Under Trigger, change it to Use as a button, then under Single Click, select Menu Back. Under Grip, Use it as a button again, held should be under sprint, and single click should be reload slash menu back. That should fix the bindings for index. Step 20, game settings. These settings should hopefully be on there by default, but if they're not like this, you should set them up manually. Under gameplay, comfort sneak should be off and movement should be on smooth locomotion. Under display, actor fade should be about halfway, item fade should be a little bit less than actor, object fade around the seam as item, and grass fade should be about halfway. Show floating markers should also be off. Pip by head, this should be in white by default, but change it to whatever color you want. I still recommend white for the most clarity. Under VR performance, leave it on TAA, the antistropic filtering, keep it on 16, shadow distance should be on high, but turn it down if you have performance issues, and the max particles can be lowered if you want. Character lighting should be off. Step 21, starting a new game. Select new game and the intro clip will start. This is a new intro that isn't in vanilla, so you may want to watch it. When you get to a white void, you're going to see a pop-up box. Select OK and you'll be taken to character creation. You can only select pre-made characters, unfortunately, so do what you want. To exit character creation after you've made your choice, press the right A button. 
Now you're going to get a pop-up box for pre-made settlements. You have two options. The way I built this mod list, which is complete auto-built settlements, you can also kill Preston Garvey and every essential NPC, and you never have to deal with settlement BS, which I personally think is a horrible gameplay mechanic. Or you can not do the pre-made settlements and just play the game as normal. If you'd like to play the way I intended it to be played, click on yes, show me the options. If you're not doing it, click on no, not this game. If you went ahead with auto-built settlements, you'll get another new message, click on OK, I'm ready, then yes, let's do this. Now you're going to start getting notifications in a text box to the right of your headset telling you the mods are loaded and that settlements are being built. Make sure you save after this. If you're doing the auto settlements, this will take a while, like 30 to 40 minutes to complete. You can continue through the vault and play through that, but do not exit the vault before the auto settlements complete to avoid problems with your game. Step 22, choosing your start. Now exit the bathroom and you're going to get a pop-up box asking if you wanna go directly to the vault or play through the intro with Nate and Nora. I usually choose to go to the vault because you'll have less issues and it's less buggy. If you wanna play through the intro, you can do that, but there is a stalker mod on here, so if you don't play through the pre-vault time quick enough, you might get some raiders trying to kill you as you head towards the vault. Just run over there quickly and you should be fine. If you did start in the vault, go to the terminal, choose your name and stats, open the door, and just play through it normally. But again, do not leave the vault if you're doing auto settlements, you need to wait until you get a message saying it's complete. Step 23, gameplay tips and just weird quirks to know. As you're playing through the vault, you might notice some things are different. Number one, the vault is dark. This was done for performance reasons because by default, Bethesda put an ungodly amount of stupid light sources in there, which tanks performance even on a 4090, so we just yeeted them. You can get a flashlight by holding down the left trackpad on index. The darkness also makes sense in lore. It's been like 200 years since the vault was operational. The lights would not still be on full blast. Number two, bats is bullet time now and guns are accurate. When you press VATS, you'll enter a slowdown mode. Just fire or hit normally. The movement during this is teleport, there's no way to change that, and on the desktop version of Fallout 4, you can't even move at all. So just live with it, I guess. It's not that bad. Number three. You may notice that when you pick up the pit boy in the vault, it's very tiny and looks weird. This is because we don't have FRIK loaded into your game yet, which will give you a body and fix the pit boy. But FRIK needs to be loaded outside of the vault to avoid problems with your game. Again, if you're doing the auto build settlements, which I recommend, you need to wait inside the vault until you get a message saying it's done. You can also make saves in the vault during this time if you need to leave. Step 24, leaving the vault and setting up FRIK. Once you get a message saying conquer has finished auto-built settlements, go ahead and head up the vault elevator. When you get outside, wait around for around a minute and you'll get a pop-up box for backpacks of the Commonwealth. Select default, or if you want, you can select a higher percentage chance if you want more enemies to have backpacks. Now this is very important. Make a save and exit the game completely. Go back to Mod Organizer 2. At the bottom, you'll see a mod called FRIK Enable After Initial First Save. Check that on. Now go find the game folder files that we talked about in step 12. Find the folder called Load Order for your profile. Go into it and you'll see something called Load Order. Right click that and select Copy. Now go to your mod profile. To find where that is, go back into Mod Organizer 2 under your own custom profile that we set up before. At the top, you'll see a yellow folder icon. Click on that and select Open Profile Folder. Now paste the load order that you copied and select Overwrite. Go back to Mod Organizer 2 and press F5 to get the correct load order. Now you can start the game up again and you should have a body and the Pip-Boy should look normal. Step 25, Pip-Boy Control and FRIK Calibration. After you load into your game, you're going to want to calibrate your body. First, to open the Pip-Boy, you need to physically bring your right hand over to the button and swipe up. To select tabs in the Pip-Boy, it'll be the A and B buttons on the left controller. To go down or up, use the joystick. To select items, it's either the trackpad on the left controller or joystick click on the right. To favorite items and get into a secondary menu, use the grip button on the left. 
For now, go into the miscellaneous tab and select the FRIK holotape, then choose calibrate. Stand up straight and press trigger. You can also remove the head here if you want. I recommend doing that as the headgear can obstruct your point of view. After you made your settings, select save to INI and you're done. Step 26. Hollow tape settings. Go into the miscellaneous tab and find settings. Scroll down until you see Kabuto VR, select it, and at the bottom find PAFAS and enable that. Find the Journey holotape settings. Keep the mode unrealistic, but turn off every other setting except at the top where it says Journey Running. That should be on Yes. Find the True Storms configuration holotape, turn it on, set the Ghoul Storm chance to 10%. Step 27 Mod Config Settings. Open the main menu and you'll see something called Mod Config at the top. Controlling the settings in VR is a bit weird and glitchy, but there's not much you can do about it. For setting numbers, you'll need to go to your real-life keyboard and use the arrow keys. And after you select something in there, you'll need to back out completely from the pause menu, then go back into it and select a different setting. For auto eat and drink in survival, turn off the notifications, otherwise you'll get annoying notifications if you don't have food or water on you. You do not need to ever manually eat or drink in the game. As long as you have the required items, your character will do it automatically. For companion heal thyself, under stun settings, change the non bleed out stun chance to 100%. Change the max delay time before stun recovery attempt to 5. Leave everything else on this page on default. For dog meat slash canines under companion heal thyself, change the required armor for canine auto stim to off. Under save hotkey, if you're doing the automatic save system, change the hotkey to N. Step 28, items at the chem station. When you get to a chem station, either in Sanctuary or Red Rocket, you'll want to get a couple of items that are found under the Utility section. You may need to scroll down for a while, as a lot of modded items end up here. The Companion Whistle will let you summon dog meat and other companions to you if they get lost. I would recommend favoriting that onto your Quick Menu. Affinity List will let you see Companion Affinity, and the Wait item will let you wait anywhere you want, but creating one of those will cost 50 bottle caps. Also, grab the Virtual Chem Setting Holotape if it's not in your Pip-Boy. Step 29. Holster System and Physical Chems There is an optional Holster and Physical Chem System in the mod list. To holster an item, make sure it's equipped and select the slot you want to put it on, like your back, hip, etc. You can grab it from the holster with grip. Some things you may want to be aware of is you won't be able to actually physically see the item on your body like in Skyrim VR. It's also glitchier than Skyrim. If you have two items in your inventory called the same thing and you holster one of them, it tends to freak out. You can fix this by renaming one of the weapons that you want to holster into something unique at the weapons bench. For physical chems, you can change what the chems are in the settings menu, but by default the left shoulder is stem packs, left hip is rad X, etc. You can grab it with the grip and physically bring it to your hand to heal yourself. If you find that it's glitchy with the grip button, you can change that in the settings. Personally, I set it to the left A button and that seems to work fine. You can also two-hand most weapons in the game now. The default binding for that is trigger on the left hand. Step 30. Gameplay tips and general advice. This is in general a bit of a more challenging experience than the vanilla game. It's light survival oriented, and by that I mean I cut out a lot of the annoyances with vanilla survival, so you don't need to worry about eating and drinking as long as you have some food and water. You can also save anywhere, but on the flip side, ammo is limited and if you shoot someone in the head, they're going to die, but the same is true for you. There are also more NPCs in the world and you will periodically get people that hunt you down. Some tips are to travel with dog meat. There's also a new companion called Heather Castian. In addition to being a badass that doesn't take up a companion slot, you can sell your junk to her if you find the inventory is getting too full while traveling. Also, when you leave the vault, you may notice you have stalkers trying to kill you. Just run over to Cotsworth and he should be able to take care of them. You cannot fast travel by default, but if you take control of a settlement by doing quests for them, you can fast travel between own settlements. Other than that, the game is fun, at least more fun than vanilla. Read the Google Doc I made, that still has way more information than I can make in a video. And have fun out there, Wastelanders.